Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Rob Bernardi. I'm the elephant manager here at the Houston Zoo. And uh, today I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our herd and we're gonna introduce our newest member to you. So you guys will have to look, you'll see a, a bunch of elephants behind me. You'll have to look pretty hard. He's right up front in the middle right now. But this is the newest member to our herd. This is Nelson. Nelson is a little boy who was born to Shawnee, who is a 29 year old Asian elephant here at the zoo. So if you look real close, Nelson's gonna, you'll have to look between all the feet, but Nelson's gonna move around where he kind of wants to move around. Uh, Nelson was born May 12th. When he was born, he was 326 pounds. We've been weighing him just about every morning. And uh, we weighed him this morning, he was already at 384 pounds. So generally what you see is a calf will be born and then for the, they'll immediately lose 10 to 20% of their body weight. Then about a week later, they start putting weight back on. Uh, Nelson skipped the whole losing body weight part. Nelson went straight to just putting weight on. So born at 326 and every weight that we've gotten consecutively after that has been an increase in weight. Uh, so I'm gonna answer some questions from the feed. Amanda has a question. They wanna know what do our elephants eat? So you can see them eating a lot, of the, a lot of their diet that they have in front of them right now. Majority of what we feed to our elephants is coastal hay. Uh, we go through about, we have, now we have 12 elephants all together. Nelson's not eating hay, but the other 11 do eat hay. Between those 11, we go through about 30 bales of hay a day. Each bale is about 50 pounds. So they go through quite a bit. Uh, and then when we train them, we do a lot of training. We do a lot of relationship building with all of our elephants here. When we train them, we often use apples, carrots, sweet potatoes. And you can see uh, we have some trainers tossing some of those in front of them. Uh, they love watermelon. They love cantaloupe. Um, so we try and keep the treats coming for them. Uh, Amanda has another question. Do they have one baby at a time? They do have one baby at a time. Um, baby is, like I said, baby's generally around 250 pounds. So because of the size of the baby, um, Biology kind of limits them to only one calf. Uh, it's happened before, it's very rare. It's happened before where a mom will have two babies, but usually they're pretty small um, and they get a, they, health-wise, they have a rough start. Um, so like I said, Nelson was born at 326. Normally a calf is gonna be about 250 pounds. In Texas here, we always have calves that are usually north of 300. We like big babies. Paulina has a question, how often do they bathe? Uh, so that varies a little bit. So we, part of our relationship building and part of our training, we bathe all of our elephants every day, including Nelson. He's, he gets a bath with his mom every morning. Uh, and then on top of that, once we're done bathing them and looking them over, making sure that they're healthy and don't have any scrapes or scratches, we'll put them out in our yard. And from that point, they have access to a pool and they have access to a bunch of different uh, waters where they can then bathe themselves. So in the winter, they won't bathe themselves that often. In the winter, we will bathe them in the barn, but our barn is heated. So we'll keep them in the barn until they dry off. In the summer, like we're about to get into, they'll start bathing themselves two or three times a day, even after we've bathed them, just because it's so warm out. Uh, so I'm gonna introduce all the elephants. So these, this is just a small sampling of some of the elephants that we have in front of you. So the elephant that should be in shot right now, this is Tupelo. Tupelo is a nine-year-old female. Next to Tupelo is Joy. Joy is actually uh, Shawnee's second youngest calf. Joy will be three uh, in July. And then next to Joy is obviously Nelson. Nelson born May 12th. And then you can see Nelson nursing right now. Nelson is nursing from his mom. Her name is Shawnee. She will be 30 later on this year. Uh, Jennifer has a question. Are the elephants acting differently with no visitors? Some of them are. Um, like I said, we work real closely with them. For the most part, they only recognize us or they only respond to us. We do have some males who uh, interact with the public every now and then. Um, so I think they are missing some of the uh, interaction with the public. They're missing seeing the people every day. Um, the elephants themselves, um, you know, they're very much used to the public, but especially our females, they all live together in a herd. So most of their social needs are met uh, either with us or through their family unit. So Nelson being a male, uh, I should say this, uh, Nelson being a male will eventually, uh, he's born into a, a herd of females and younger males. 
um, and he'll stay with this herd until he hits puberty. Puberty is anywhere between six and 10. Um, and then the females will actually start to ignore him. They'll start to push him out of the herd. And from that point, this is what you see in the wild, from that point, males are totally solitary animals. They live on their own. So our males will go and live with some of the other younger males. They'll go to our bachelor herd. Um, and it's the opposite for females. Females born into herd, kind of like Joy, Shawnee's second youngest. Joy will spend her whole life within the female herd. Uh, Lori has a question. Will Nelson be out in the yard when the zoo opens? He absolutely will be out in the yard when the zoo opens. Um, so he, uh, he had a little bit of a slow start. Uh, we had some medical problems with him when he was first born. So it took us a couple days before we could fully introduce him to everybody. But now he's been fully introduced to everybody in our female herd. And um, he is, this is one of the big milestones we shoot for is we try to get there as soon as we can after a baby is born. But he's now going out with the herd every day, um, living like an elephant uh, every day. So he will absolutely be in the yard when you guys start to come back to the zoo. Tracy, is that a wild rabbit? That is a wild rabbit who is munching on a carrot. <laughs> they are all over the zoo. So you'll see them when you guys come out. Hello to Carol in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Hi, Carol. So I'll give you an idea of their size. Shawnee is an adult female. She's uh, right around 8,000 pounds. Um, Joy is right around 2,000 pounds. And, and Tupelo is right around 5,000 pounds. And as I mentioned earlier, um, um, Nelson is uh, 384 pounds. So fully grown, Nelson's gonna be around 10,000 pounds. He has a ways to go. Uh, he won't hit fully grown until he's in his late teens, early 20s. So he's got a ways to go, but he'll end up 10 to 12,000 pounds. An adult female is generally between seven and 8,000 pounds. On the same subject as weight, during the course of Shawnee's pregnancy, which was 22 and a half months or so, she put on about 500 pounds. Um, and then we weighed her about a week after Nelson was born and she took off about 400 pounds. So that's generally with uh, generally what we shoot for. We wanna make sure that they're not putting on too much weight or putting on too little weight. Um, when we have a pregnancy, we weigh them every two weeks and we wanna be sure that they're putting on in total about 500 pounds. Okay, we got a question here. Mary, what is their lifespan? So average lifespan of elephant uh, in the wild, even in captivity is usually about late 40s. You can see them live into their 50s and 60s. A lot of times that's just uh, an example of how long they can live, but not as an example of their average lifespan. So generally uh, between 45 and 50 years old. Lori, how is Joy reacting to Nelson? So Joy is, so like I said, everybody is, has gotten pretty comfortable with them. Joy, just part of her personality and her nature is a little bit more standoffish to new things. So uh, the first time she met Joy, she was a little bit, uh, didn't want to walk right up to Joy. wasn't exactly sure how to respond to her. Uh, Nelson actually walked right up to Joy and uh, that freaked Joy out a little bit. So Joy actually went on the retreat and backed up quite a bit. Um, but slowly at this point, Joy's, Joy's pretty comfortable with them, uh, but it took a couple days. So you guys may have read, uh, the, the zoo put out a, a press release when Nelson was born. You guys may have read that um, this is Shawnee's sixth calf and this was um, arguably one of her uh, more chaotic deliveries uh, just because when, when Nelson was born, he had a torn vesicle in his umbilicus. So shortly after he was born, we noticed very quickly, it was hard not to miss, but he was hemorrhaging lots of blood. Um, so like I said, we do a lot of training with all of our elephants. We always train for worst case scenario. So in this situation, uh, because of how the elephant team had trained Shawnee, um, we were able to get our hands on Nelson. And from there, because of how the veterinary team trains, they were obviously able to uh, move him to surgery. From surgery, they were able to find the vessel that was torn. They were able to sew it up, which stopped the bleed. And then at that point, they were also able to stitch up his abdomen. So he, he had a little bit of a chaotic start. Um, it was a pretty nerve wracking experience, but because we trained for worst case scenario and because our teams are trained so well and our veterinary teams are trained so well, we actually had a very positive outcome to what was a rough start. Uh, so we're keeping a close eye. He, he still has an incision site on his abdomen, uh, but we're keeping a close eye. We're checking it every day to, uh, to make sure that it's healing properly. 
Kathy, what type of weather do the elephants prefer? They probably prefer, so they're very used, Asian elephants are native to Southeast Asia where you're gonna run into a lot of real humid climate just like we have here in Houston. Uh, so they adapt very well to it, but they probably are like us. They prefer, they prefer California weather. It's in the 70s, breezy, not too hot, not too cold. Um, but like I said, very hardy animals. They adapt very well to low temperatures or to hot temperatures. You see Shawnee and you see the little one flapping their ears. That's, uh, you'll see them do that more and more as the summer progresses, as it gets hotter out. That's one of the techniques that they use to keep themselves cool, along with, I mentioned earlier, as it gets warmer out, they bathe themselves more and more. But uh, so on top of bathing themselves and flapping their ears, they pump a lot of blood through their ears, and then they'll flap their ears to dissipate all of that heat. And then the blood will pump back into their body at a cooler temperature. Uh, Paul and Jenny, Freya from Alabama. Hey, what's up, Paul and Jenny and Freya? Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> so again, you guys kind of see a little bit of a family unit right in front of you. You see Nelson's little, little one, and then uh, to his right is uh, his big sister, Joy. And then uh, the big elephant is both of their moms. Her name is Shawnee. So right now I mentioned Nelson's not eating any hay or any produce like we used to train the other elephants. He is, uh, he's putting on all that weight just off of mom's milk. So that's the only thing he's taking in right now. He's just nursing. Um, about a month or two months in, he'll start to sample solid foods. He'll start to throw some solids in his mouth. He'll start to throw some hay in his mouth. Um, they learn a lot by what, the young ones will learn a lot by watching the other elephants that they're surrounded by. So he'll start to throw some food in his mouth and start to chew on it. Um, and then he'll slowly train, slowly progress onto solid foods. And then usually about Joy's age, two years, um, they're no longer nursing and they're fully on solid foods. Anna has a question, do the older ma males stay separate from the females? Yes, they do. So what you guys see in the wild, and we try to do the same thing here, male, like I said, will get pushed out of the female herd when they're younger. From that point, male's totally solitary, lives on his own. Uh, once a male gets big and strong, um, and is ready for breeding, then he'll randomly move back into female herds and breed. Um, but from the point that they hit puberty, for the rest of their life, the, the males are solitary animals. They don't live in any sort of family unit. Females, like I mentioned earlier, totally opposite. Joy, Joy, as an example here, she's born into this female herd. She'll never leave this female herd. Jean has a question. Is that fur on Joy's head? Kind of, it's hair. Uh, so you'll notice it more when they're young ones. Um, and you'll notice it a lot on Nelson as well. But they're kind of born with a certain amount of hair. And uh, they really, that's when they look like the most of a fuzzball is when they're that young. And then as they get older and bigger, they kind of grow into the hair. So the hair gets real spaced out. So you tend not to, on a larger animal like Shawnee, you tend not to notice it quite as much. On the little ones, all you see is hair. Tiffany, uh, when, will we, when will he start eating real food? So real food, like I mentioned, about two months, a month or two months into his development is when he'll start to sample solid foods. Uh, so like I said, right now he's just on mom's milk. Uh, and then um, after, and then it'll take a couple months for him to, to really get comfortable with solids. And he won't fully be on solid or, or quote unquote real food until he's about a year and a half, two years old. So it takes a while. Brianna has a question, what do they do for fun? So right now, Nelson is supplying all of the fun. Uh, everybody is very interested in him, very curious with him. Uh, but then we also, we have a, we have a schedule, uh, a rotating schedule of, of enrichment for all these guys. So they have access to a pool. Both of our yards have a full pool. Um, so they'll, they'll use the pool for fun. We also, we use uh, tractor tires, we use logs. Uh, they get lots of different types of enrichment, um, which is also part of their diet. But um, a variety of bamboo and hackberry, um, sugar cane, stuff like that, which they love. Uh, so the, the question, the elephant that just came over, this is Tess. Tess is another older female. Tess also has a couple calves here. Um, Tess is 35. So our elephants actually, they do a lot for fun. A lot of different things for fun. Uh, we use scents. Um, 
We use food as a type of enrichment for them. Like I said, we use browse, we use toys. All of the toys obviously are, you cannot get at Petco. So we need to be creative. We need to, uh, we need to find inventive ways to come up with large elephant proof toys. Um, so yeah, we're constantly trying to think of ways to enrich them. Again, they get a, a ton of social enrichment and interaction just with, uh, just from living in a family unit like they're in. Sean has a question. How did Nelson get his name? Um, so that's a funny story. So we were able to do a little bit of blood testing on, um, on Shawnee before Nelson was born. And, and all of the tests suggested pretty strongly that we were going to have a female calf. So we had a, a lot of female names picked out because we were very confident it was going to be a female. And then, of course, it was not a female. Uh, it was a little boy. So, uh, so after we got past the first couple days of his real cha chaotic uh, uh, health scare, um, we had to start thinking of male names and we had none loaded. So, uh, so everybody on the team um, was trying to come up with names and um, we were trying to think of Texas icons. And one of the names that came up was Willie Nelson. And we, all of us love that name. We were all, we're all big fans of Willie Nelson, but we already have a Tilly. So Tilly is one of uh, Tess's calves and we, uh, so we couldn't name a, a, a baby so close to Tilly's name. So we went with Nelson and that's where Nelson came from. Nancy, how long do their tusks get? Uh, so everybody behind me, except for Nelson, is a female Asian elephant. And in Asian elephants, uh, only the males get tusks. Uh, and the tusk, if you let it, will grow, a lot of times will grow right on down to the ground. It'll grow a couple feet long, it'll hit the ground, it'll grow right up, straight out in front of them. Um, in female elephants, like you see behind you, uh, they don't have tusks. They have something a lot smaller, it's called a tush. It is ivory, it's just a lot smaller and it's hidden underneath that top lip. And it usually doesn't get much farther than the top lip. So usually it only gets a couple inches long and it's constantly growing. But the reason for that is because our females are using it to strip bark from trees. They use it to uh, push toys around. So they do a, a real good job of, uh, of keeping their tushes pretty short. When you guys come back out to the zoo, you'll see we, we have our female herd, which is where you'll see Nelson. And then we also have our bachelor pad. And the bachelor pad is where you're going to see all the tusks. All the boys over there have have tusks and you guys can see how big and long they are. Sammy has a question. Do they live in groups in the wild? They do. Uh, the females live in groups. Um, so like I said, the female, uh, a female baby that's born into a group will spend her whole life in that group. Um, it's, it's consisted of adult females and then young ones. The young ones will be male and female. Uh, male will eventually get pushed out and the males do not live in groups. Males live by themselves. Um, so yes, uh, the females will spend their entire life living in a family unit. Michelle, how is their eyesight? Uh, eyesight is probably on par with ours. Uh, in general, in the uh, animal kingdom, if you're not a hunter, you probably don't have the best eyesight. These guys are not hunters. These guys are uh, browsers and foragers, browsers generally. Um, so their eyesight is probably on par with ours. They don't, they don't have the best eyesight. It's not their strongest sense. Their sense of smell, their sense of hearing, are really their strongest senses. Asian elephants, are they endangered? Yes, they absolutely. This is another question we have. Critically endangered animal, um, estimated 30 to 40,000 animals left in the wild. Um, the part of the world that you find them in, Southeast Asia, is not a very large part of the world. And it's very densely populated with, uh, with humans, with people like you and me. Um, so there's just not a lot of room for them to move around. As, as that part of the world gets more and more populated, we are moving further and further into uh, property or land that's that's occupied by elephants and um, and when you come to those elephant human interactions usually elephants are on the losing side of it so yeah they are very much endangered Amy has a question what do you do with all their poop we compost it uh, so we uh, we have a team of team of 10 and um, we clean up with we clean up from these guys twice a day and then uh, and then all of it gets dumped into a compost pile so we try not to, we try to be as environmentally friendly as possible. So I mentioned Tess walked into frame a couple of minutes ago. Tupelo, who I mentioned earlier, who's to the left of, uh, of Tilly right now, is also Tess's baby. And then Tilly, who's up front and center, also belongs to Tess. So Tilly will be two in June next month. 
And I mentioned earlier, Tupelo is nine. She'll be 10 later on this year. So if you guys have any other questions, keep them coming. Um, uh, like I said, we right now with Nelson, we have 12 elephants all together. And when you guys, when you guys, when the zoo opens up um, to members on June 1st and 2nd, and then it opens to regular public on June 3rd, you guys will be able to come out and see all of these elephants. Keisha has a question. Is it true elephant emotions are like humans? Um, hard to say. So what we, we tend to look at how they're reacting to situations. And then we, because we know how to describe or, or classify our emotions, we assume a lot that they're having the same emotion just on how they're reacting. They are very emotional animals. They're very social animals. We know that for a fact. Um, so we try and meet all of their social needs um, when it comes to situations like that. But it's, it's hard to say that their emotions um, are similar to what we're experiencing as well. We, uh, we can see certain, you know, when they're running around and having fun, we obviously know when they're having fun. Um, so it depends on really what kind of, depends on what kind of physical action they're showing us to be whether or not we can interpret their, their emotion. Tilly? Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm back in frame now. Uh, so yeah, so we are about to wrap up, I believe. So like I mentioned earlier, so June 1st and 2nd, we're gonna be open to members. June 3rd, we are gonna be open to the public and we are very excited. The zoo has taken lots of steps to make it as safe of an experience as possible for you guys. We're very excited to open and see you guys back in the zoo. Uh, tickets will go on sale today at noon. You can go to houstonzoo.org. And from what I understand, all tickets need to be purchased online. So we would hate for you guys to show up and not have a ticket already purchased. You can do it on your phone as well. Um, Thank you so much. We also have uh, an emergency zoo fund on our website that um, a lot of people have donated to. It has really helped what we do here at the zoo. It's helped us um, just because, uh, you know, a lot of workplaces are shutting down and can't make it into work. We, we, because we have to take care of these guys and the conservation of these guys is so important to us that we're coming in every day. We're still taking care of them. The emergency fund has helped. Uh, immensely with that so we really appreciate it and again if you want to donate to the emergency fund you can reach that from the houston zoo website thank you guys i hope i answered all your questions i can't we can't wait to see you guys on june 3rd and thereafter uh thanks for stopping in